The island you see here on screen is an island in Ponytown full of a bunch of different mini games. We have everything from Boat to Brazil up here, where you have to uh, destroy the boat and hope that you don't get sunk while you're on the boat. We have our original Great of the Dragon, which was the first thing I did. We have Vibe Squares, and then Gay Box, which is the most popular for some reason, among many others on this island. And then, of course, I have another island with even more games on it. Right, now, to be fair, a lot of these are more experimental, and some of them are not finished, and stuff like that, but there is a lot more on this island, and even more on this island, which has, again, a lot more experimental games and stuff on it, and this, at least one game that was not made by me and made by someone else, uh, but the point is that I have made a ton of different mini games here in Ponytown, including some that you can play by yourself that you don't need other players for, and the reason why I show this all to you is because I want to explain that mini games are, are entirely possible here in Ponytown. It's it's a little bit difficult, it's a little bit tricky, but in today's video, I wanna go over a lot of helpful tips and things that can help you make your own mini games here in Ponytown. So the first thing I wanna discuss is randomness, random chance, etc. This is one of the most important features in your game. A ton of different games do this. Basically every game does this really, besides stuff like chess and checkers and things like that. There's random chance in Uno. Literally any card game usually has a randomness to it because you draw from a deck and the deck is shuffled. Monopoly has a randomness with its dice. Every single game essentially has a random element to it. Usually it's just gonna be dice and luckily in Punny Town there is a dice command is just slash roll and then enter and it gives you a dice roll out of 100. Hey, 94, that's pretty good. But you can actually customize that dice roll by just typing in a number right after slash roll. You hit space and then a number, so let's say six, and that rolls a six-sided dice. If I wanted to roll two six-sided dice, I can do slash roll 2d6 and that will roll two six-sided dice. Type it in, I rolled a three and a one for a total of four and those were both six out of dice. And of course I can customize this however I want. I can be out of 20, I can be out of, you know, 2000, etc. whatever number I want to, and that will dictate either how many spaces you move forward or some random thing that happens. This is the most basic way to introduce randomness to your game, at least here in Ponytown. So there's actually other ways to introduce randomness to your game in Ponytown. First up, we have these leaves here, uh, a leaf pile and a leaves <laughs> item is what it's called, which is kind of funny to think about, but anyway, as you notice this leaves item here has three different colors on it every single time i click on that leaf pile or these leaves even though i click on this red one i might get yeah sure the red one but the next time i click on it i'm getting a yellow one next time i click on it i'm getting a red one and so on and so on now I'm getting an orange one etc so technically there is a one in three chance that i get a specific thing and you can use this as a random element you can say at the start of your turn click on this leaf pile here which if you do if you make it like a big leaf pile like this i definitely recommend having the leaves here too because it will kind of help you show the different colors so you can kind of get an idea of the different colors but anyway click on it and then ooh, i got this so now this certain thing happens i click on it ooh, i got a yellow one so i do this certain thing etc etc until whatever happens until your game is over right another random thing that you can do is things to do with placing items so certain items like the small rock every single time i place this item down it gives me another random rock as you can see i've placed five different items and now I'm back to this one even though I started with this one so let's click this one and now I have this one again and I click this and now I have a new unique one etc so every single time I place an item down it gives me a different small rock I don't really know why this is I don't know why Ponytown just doesn't have like a way to get a specific rock if you want it the only other way to get a specific rock that you want is to either hit shift on your keyboard or hit escape a bunch of times until you get that rock that you want but essentially what you can do is have something set up like this where there's like six different spaces or however many different variants of the item you're using are place the different variants on the different items and then have a space over here where you can place the item you start your turn maybe or maybe you do this at the end of your turn or you do this when a certain thing is triggered or something you press you place an item down and then you check if it matches something on the board it doesn't match something on the board so we place another one down and this one does match something on the board it matches this green one over here pixel perfect the same which means maybe now i have to go to this green space or something like that or maybe now the green space is eliminated or any other number of different random mechanics that you wanted to introduce into your game this is another great way to add randomness to your game at least here in ponytown now the last way to introduce randomness to your game and this is more so a timer than it is anything else but the torches work very strange because every single time you boop off a torch or sneeze on it or kiss it or whatever basically every time a torch comes off a random timer is set automatically 
I don't know the lowest amount and I don't know the highest amount, but as you can see here, the they're coming on in order, which is obviously fine or whatever. But if we just boop this second one off and then this first one off, Let's see what happens here. The, notice that the third one still hasn't come back on yet. The second one finally comes back on and now the third one is triggering and then that one's triggering. It's random every single time. You never know like how long it's gonna take for the torch to come back on. Like I said, it's random. So you can use this as a timer, a randomized timer, or you can just use it as you boop off the torch and if your torch comes back on first, you lose it or something like that. We actually have a game like that in the bad games where you you, you wait to the last possible second to turn off your torch and then whenever it comes back on, you, you lose if the timer hasn't ended or whatever. But yeah, you can use this as a timer too. So you can have it set to be something like you boop the torch and then you run away really quickly and you do a bunch of different stuff like that. And then if the torch comes back on, you, you're out of time and then you have to come back. So I can do all kinds of stuff over here and, and things like that. You can even add um, extra torches and so like extra time. So I boop on all three torches and then I go do my thing and then when all three torches are on again I, I i my time is up and it goes in the next player or something like that so this is two different way of like honestly three different ways here to add randomness to your game and each one is definitely different now i will say that the rocks are not the only thing that every single time you place it you get a random variant of it i know lily pads do the same thing for some reason even though you would think it would just have rotation every single time you place it down it gives you a random rotation so you could technically use that too I just think the rocks work a little bit better because there's more versions of it. And honestly, I'm still holding out hope that something like lily pads will eventually be rotatable instead of just being random every single time you place it, which is honestly a really weird decision. But anyway, speaking of rotation and speaking of weird torch mechanics, there's actually another thing that we need to talk about, and that is game mechanics themselves. Now, what I mean by this is not just like come up with something like a game that exists already, which is honestly helpful too. You can come up with something like uh, Monopoly or uh, Candyland or something like that and make a variant of it, use mechanics that you know work and use that as a means to make a new game. What I mean is find a mechanic in Ponytown itself and try to exploit the heck out of it basically push it to its extreme. So for example, let's just go ahead and come back to our original map over here. Boat to Brazil is something that introduces a lot of mechanics. Obviously you roll to move so many spaces and do, do different things based on what you land on. Um, but there's also the painting mechanic where I can change the color of objects. Every time I land on a white space, I have to change it to black or blue or pink or whatever. And then that changes the game as thing goes on. But if you land on a black space, you actually get the ability to change the floor tiles. So, cause you're like erasing parts the boat and of course that's kind of the point of the game is to eventually destroy the boat and so that if anyone's on the boat they die and then of course there's points and um moving around and stuff like that so that's a whole different thing but there's a lot of mechanics going on here and so it is utilizing a bunch um but something that utilizes one i think to its full extent is gay box which we mentioned briefly before but essentially how this game works is you just get some tall walls like so just put it on there close put a bunch of people in there close it off and then as you saw a minute ago there is a bunch of stripes inside here the players are going to be moving around inside this box trying to stay as low as possible because if you're up too high you get you get seen obviously try to stay as low as, as possible and just kind of run around until the players say stop and then when they say stop the uh the host will shove a wall through the box randomly and then play continues and then eventually a player will be stuck between two walls like so. When this happens, a different gameplay mechanic is introduced. So obviously we have the wall mechanics, the tall walls, that's what you're utilizing, of course. You're using it to its full extent in that regard, and then you're using it in its full extent in this kind of buggy regard, if that makes sense. Because whenever you're between two walls like this, you're essentially stuck between two colliders, and this means I can now walk through these walls if I want to. So what happens in this case, at least in gay box, you move down to leave the box, and we go until there's only one player left. But just to show you that it's impossible to go inside this space without doing that. I can't, I'm, I'm walking straight up and I cannot, I cannot go inside there at all. If I come in this way, I can't, I can't get in at all. There's no way to get into this section without being put into it. So that is one thing. Again, if you're using walls, maybe consider eventually you might be stuck between walls or maybe you wanted it to be more literal. Like if you're literally just stuck between like one wall. So like this or something like that, where I'm stuck between one, I can technically go through it. Uh, maybe you want to play around with the ability of being inside colliders. So you do something where you place a bunch of like really huge items or something, right? Place these around and now suddenly I'm inside these. And if I leave, I can't go back in it, etc. but I can do like this or something. So maybe you can use this as a means of some kind of secret area that you can get access to only on certain conditions or something. 
different stuff like that. This is just an, a, a different gameplay mechanic that you could utilize to its full extent and play around with and use for other games. Now, of course, there's other simple mechanics like being able to move items around. And so that is something that's really handy for something like Vibe Squares where you place random items and move items around a bunch. There's a bunch of different game mechanics in here, even though some of them seem super simple, like literally just moving an item. This is super, this is like a super big deal because in real life, whenever you're playing a board game, there's a lot of pieces you might be moving around. So obviously most of the time you're gonna play your game piece. You're, most of the time you're gonna be your own game piece or something like that. But if for some reason your board is really small or something like that, you can have each player pretend to be an item. So one player can be a starfish, one player can be a banana, etc. And then you roll and then you move it that way. Rather than having to have a player stand on the tile, roll and then move that many spaces, etc. You can just move an item instead. Or maybe it's just any number of different things. All kinds of different mechanics in this game that you can just play around with. Of course, there's water and how some things bob and some things don't and then even though it's the same item sometimes it doesn't under certain conditions is really weird there's a lot of different gameplay mechanics you can utilize here and the point is to play around with them experiment with them experiment 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 with these different mechanics and see what you can do in this game on the party island in terms of you know not necessarily unique things but different things and so another thing too is to remember to combine your mechanics again with the boat to brazil um that we mentioned a minute ago you're moving around the board so the randomness of dice rolls the the randomness of each space does a different thing uh changing of colors is another big mechanic in this the ability to place tiles and erase tiles is another thing so there's a bunch of different mechanics going on here the last thing i want to talk about is uh, looking at mechanics that exist in already game and in, in games that already exist for example like monopoly or something like that right you move around the board you land on a property you can buy it and whatever and you can do different stuff with that monopoly is entirely possible in ponytown because all the mechanics that utilize monopoly are technically in ponytown we have the dice we have items we can use to represent certain things we have of course thing like tiles we can place down or items we can place down as spaces we have um uh, everything we need we literally have everything we need i guess maybe minus money but we can always just do something where like we place fruit and the different fruits are different values and stuff like that so technically every monopoly is 100 percent possible and so if something as complicated as monopoly is possible in ponytown maybe consider other games that are kind of complex or different or interesting and stuff like that and play around with it and see if you can put it into ponytown because if you can put that game into ponytown you can put games similar to it in ponytown you can put games that utilize the same mechanics in Ponytown, even, even if it's an original thing or not. Even something like Battleship is technically possible here in Ponytown. Obviously, you have to do it kind of weird where you place tables and place items underneath the tables or whatever, and then just take turns deleting one or whatever. But technically, it's possible. So just think about that and just t take a game that exists in real life right now and see what you can do to put it into Ponytown. And that will be a great start for you being able to create your own original games here. But I think that is everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I made um, a, a couple of videos before a long time ago talking about how to create your own game in Ponytown. I think this will serve as a much better example, a much better tutorial, so to speak, on how to make your own. This more so just gives you all the tips and all the tools and just says, hey, go ham, play around with all of this and see what you can come up with. I'm very eager to see what you guys come up with. If you guys ever make any, any kind of game, literally any kind of mini game in Ponytown, Hit me up, talk to me on the Reddit, hit me up on Discord or something like that at Danny Ball Sub. If you're already in my server, which you just totally do by the way, because we play some of these games sometimes for like game nights or or videos and things like that. But just hit me up somewhere and just be like, hey, I made this game. And then uh, you can explain the game to me or something like that. And then we can go, we can play it, we can practice it and play test it and stuff like that. Cause play testing is technically the very last tip is to just play test it a bunch, pretend that you're two different people, etc. The whole different thing. Hit me up. Cause I love to see these kinds of things. I've seen some before in the past. Some people have shared them to me before in the past. And honestly, a lot of them have not been super great or they've literally just been Monopoly, but in Punning Town or like a game that already exists or it would be one of my games for some reason. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so please do consider liking, subscribing, sharing and doing all of those wonderful things like that. Cause when you do wonderful things like that, not only to get access to wonderful content such as this, but you also get to become wonderful for yourself. And I think we all want that. So do those wonderful things and until next time, stay wonderful.